You see where I'm at now. You see the action, you see the door kick, you see all the drama. And yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, well, you better get your facts straight, asshole. A lot of times I get questioned. How did you start? Did Where did you start? begin? Did Tell you us begin? about your first Tell hunt. About your first hunt. Well, you're in luck, because I'm going to show you guys the beginning, how it all started. This bounty tank. About to get ready to head out on another um, case up in Daytona Beach. This should be fun. Never been there, so I look forward to having a good time, man. Catching my fugitive. I do things a lot different, you know, from every other bounty hunter. I don't jump out with fatigues and shotguns, as you'll see in the video. I take a different approach. Um, I am Ohio's number one bounty hunter flat out. Nobody do it better than me out here. That's just what it is. You know, I work for three of the biggest bondsmen in Ohio, so I'm constantly having cases. I was going to bring my guard dog right here. Yeah, you don't play no games, but uh, I like to have fun, joke around, but at the same time, it's serious. So, uh, hope you all enjoy it. Keep y'all posted on the trip to Daytona. I could have took the easy way out. I could have just went and did with the norm and got a nine to five as a nurse. But it wasn't what I wanted to do in life. It wasn't my passion. It's not what I wanted to do. So I had to sacrifice. I was homeless at times. I remember times it was just me and my dog living out of my truck. I sacrificed to get where I am now. No matter who didn't support me, some of my closest family members did not support what I was doing in my life. I remember them saying, you went to school for nursing, you went to school for four years, why won't you go do this? That's stupid. It wasn't stupid to me. God had implanted a seed in my brain that he wanted something different for me. So that's what I pursued. to Ohio only for the sole purpose of being closer to my daughter. I was at the time in Virginia, and moving back and forth playing football in different states. So at this point in time in my life, my football career was over. And it was time for me to get back in my daughter's life consistently and move closer. When I first moved to Ohio, it wasn't easy. I didn't want to be a nurse. I wanted to do what I'm doing now, which is hunt. A lot of kids go to school, go to colleges, and end up doing things that the complete opposite of what they went to school for, so it's normal. So I took on labor jobs, custodial jobs, actually working in the mall in Belden Village, cleaning toilets, doing what I needed to do to make ends meet, to save up money so I could get my Ohio license so I could hunt probably six months to a year, I did this work. So I was able to save up enough money so that I can obtain a license. Now once I got the license, it still wasn't an easy road. Then I had to find work. Though I had experience because I hunted before I moved back to Ohio, these bondsmen up here didn't know me and didn't want to give me an opportunity. So I went on for another three to six months just acquiring about work, who needed help. Until one bondsman gave me an opportunity, who was one of the biggest bondsmen in the state of Ohio, and that was Craven Bail Bonds. This guy gave me a shot, one opportunity, and I seized that moment with my first hunt, my first recorded hunt. Right now, look for these two people right here. This little buddy kind of looked like Justin Bieber. They say he got He's bipolar, so he could be crazy. But I'm worried about her. You know, she she's she's the muscle. She's the one with this case. I actually had to go out to Daytona Beach. I did a lot of research on this guy. Um, I was excited. <laughs> Never been to Daytona Beach. My first ever recorded hunt. Um, I was ready to go. 
I was out. I never forget the ride there, um, you know, joking and laughing like I normally do. Um, when I first got there, I didn't immediately look for this guy. I'm going to be honest. Um, I probably kicked it for one or two days to so enjoy it. <laughs> um, it was a great time. And then probably the second day, that's when I started putting work in. We'll hit these couple of hours and see what happens. I went down here to Daytona. I didn't have an address. I didn't have anything but his name, the application, and that he was on Daytona Beach in that area. That's all the information I had. I went down there with that information and I questioned everybody, every homeless person, every store, everybody in that area for three days straight until I got a lead. I was determined to show I had what I had what it took to be a good hunter. So I did my due diligence and I found an address on him. Kind of hope they don't answer the door so I can kick it down. Now, I'll never forget when I got the lead on this guy and I really realized he was here. My heart was racing. I could feel the excitement like, man, this is my time. It's time for me to go uphill from here. And I knew he was in there. I called the Daytona police. They came We went up there and he was there. And then at that point, I knew my career was going to take off from that point because they, they had been looking for this guy for months and months and could not find him. And here comes this guy, this random guy no one's ever met, and he finds me in a couple of days. I knew it was uphill for me. And at this time, I still had my character, which is now. I allowed this young man to kiss his wife, kiss her goodbye, say the last goodbyes. Funny thing about this hunt, um, what you're about to hear, in mid-cry, she asks for this man's debit card. Oh, I'll never forget this actual moment right here, which leads me to one of my most memorable hunts. This is what's about to happen. What stood out about this hunt, man, what didn't? It was my first car chase. Um, I'll never forget it. This starts out, the co-signer was actually the uh, child's, well, soon to be child's mom. Um, I, I'll never forget it because she was having a baby shower. Yes, a baby shower. And me and the guy I was hunting with at the time decided to crash this baby shower. And well, I'll tell you right now, she was not happy. She had all type of words for me. Um, she was already about to pop. She probably was about nine, almost about nine months pregnant. So her hormones were raging. She was pissed off. All she knows is this guy came in and basically fucked up her, uh, her baby shower. So, <laughs> you know, she wasn't too happy with me, as you can see. I wound up getting the lead on this guy, but they only told me Limited information. They said he was on 75th and Kinsman. Anybody from the Cleveland area know, they know about Kinsman. It's a rough area. Um, so all I had was a, a street number and a street name. And this street was long as hell. So literally, I drove up the entire street. It probably took me probably about 30 minutes to an hour to look at each individual house and to see if I could find this man's truck. We were looking for the truck um, 
Finally, we got in luck, we found this truck. And that's when the pursuit started. As the pursuit started, all I could remember was having an intense dialogue with myself, asking myself questions on what was going to be next. Tank, seriously, think about this. How are you going to stop this vehicle? Don't you think you need to call the police? This shit is getting crazy. It's getting out of Bruh. hand. Come on, man. There's no time to call the police. You need to do what the fuck you need to do right now. Stop to this. What if he has a weapon? Think about this shit, man. What if he draws his weapon on you? What if he shoots at you? What are you gonna do then? What do you mean if he has a weapon? Everybody has a possible weapon. This what the fuck you do, man. If he wanna pull out and draw, then you go out blazing. Do what you need to do. If you do it this way, Tank, how do you gonna think this is gonna end? What do you think is gonna happen? This may not end well. Bruh, come on, man. This shit gonna end the way you want it to end. Stop listening to him. Listen to me. This what the fuck we do. Get the fuck out! Get out! Who are you? The fuck, man? Why don't y'all just do that, man? Instead of trying to run me off the road, off the road and shit, man. Do it! Hey, hey, hey. Try to stop me off the road. You're trying to. No, I did not. You want to run? Get the fuck. You trying to. You trying to run me off the road, though, bro, man. I'm trying to tell you to pull the fuck over. Man, bro. Okay, so what the fuck? What man? I mean, I'll go on you. Did you pull in front of me, bro? Did you? Did you get run off the road? You tried, bro, you did right? you? Did no, you I did not. Right? Did not stop. What I'm saying? Did not stop the conversation. Fuck, man. Did not stop the conversation. It didn't happen. Man, what are you arguing right? about? You're a fugitive, okay? Cops would have fucking ran your ass off the road. I didn't do that. I didn't want to do that, okay? So chill, because if the cops would have came, they would have ran you off. You know what they would have did. I didn't do that to you. Hey, get, get off. I don't want to hear a fucking talk. There comes a time in every man's life that's a hunter that they realize that that badge doesn't mean shit. There are people in places that don't care about that. They don't care you have a badge. They don't care you have a gun. They have guns. They don't care about how big or how strong you are. None of that matters in the streets. And if you don't understand that now, God forbid you have to understand later. And that place for me was Detroit. All I remember is running for my life, 